The end of May saw a sharp deterioration in risk sentiment as Italy and Spain were plunged into political crisis. June looks like it's starting badly as Trump's trade wars officially commence. European bond markets were rocked to the very core this week by news that the Italian president Mattarella had rejected the five-star Lega coalition choice for finance minister on the basis that Savona was a Eurosceptic. This prompted the Prime Minister-elect Giuseppe Conti to hand back his mandate to form a government and Mattarella to offer a caretaker role to IMF official Carlo Cottarelli. Now these developments touched off incredible price action in the Italian government bond market. As recently as the 11th of May, the yield on two-year government bonds was minus 25 basis points, meaning that you effectively paid the Italian government quarter of a percent to hold your money for two years. On Friday last week, two-year Italian bonds were yielding positive 50 basis points. On Monday, they almost hit 1%, and on Tuesday, they hit 2 and 3 quarter percent, the highest yield since mid-2012. At that point, the Italian government was effectively paying more to borrow money for two years than the Portuguese government was paying to borrow for 15 years. Now, as the week wore on, the key players in this current round of Italian political drama stepped back from the brink and the Five Star Liga coalition received the approval of the president to launch a populist government last night, all but ending this crisis. However, political crisis is not really new news in post-war Italy, meaning investors will likely remain sceptical. And with Spanish Prime Minister Rajoy facing a vote of no confidence later today, we're likely to continue to see further volatility and peripheral European bond markets. For the world's fourth largest bond market to experience this kind of meltdown almost beggars disbelief and emphasizes how so-called quantitative easing or asset purchase programs from central banks may have helped asset market bubbles in what seemed like very safe government bond markets just a few weeks ago. The 3% move in Italian two-year bonds this week suggests that if indeed this was a bubble, it's popped. Now on top of these political developments early in the week, we finish the week with trade wars starting. US President Trump delivered on his protectionist trade policies last night with the announcement that US steel and aluminium tariffs against the EU, Canada and Mexico will go ahead. There should be no great surprise that the EU, Canada and Mexico will retaliate. Canada said it will match the 25% tariff on steel and 10% on aluminium, dollar for dollar. Mexico is targeting pork, sausages and fruit imports from the US. And the EU will go ahead with tariffs on US products including bourbon, Harley-Davidson motorcycles and peanut butter. Presumably the winner here will be Trump given protectionism was a key election agenda. The losers will be global trade, consumers and of course jobs. While global bond markets have been extremely volatile this last week, foreign exchange markets have been much more stable. The Australian dollar has closed between 75 and 76 on 15 of the past 16 trading days. That's despite these incredible offshore events that would arguably normally have seen much more weakness coming through. Now domestically, the focus next week will firmly be on Q1 GDP, which is released on Wednesday, the day after the RBA policy decision on Tuesday. Westpac expects to see a big contribution from net exports and a likely positive investment point to a growth pace that fits well with policymaker optimism. This should at least stop the unwinding of pricing for the RBA tightening, which has now all but disappeared by end 2018. That backdrop should be positive for the Australian dollar, at least in the short term, which should continue to trade between 75 and 76 cents next week. These are all factors we can talk about in next week's markets update.